Hey guys, so in this video we will be mounting a Kelsa roof bar. Um, all this is done actually on the roof of the truck, on the roof of the cab, after the Kelsa bar has been fitted to the roof. Kelsa bars, or light bars in general, tend to come with 18 to 20 wires, sometimes even more. Um, all the light bars I fitted in previous ones have been um, wired in parallel, actually inside the bar. Um, so it's not been a problem, so when it comes up the end, you've only got sort of four or five wires. This one wasn't. I don't know why. So I actually had 18 wires coming directly out of the bar. Um, it has four spotlights and two beacons. Um, which was a bit inconvenient. It was a huge wire, and as you can see. So, you can see there, I've just found all the, the earths, put them together, um, and I'm just soldering all those down to one wire. If you can see just above, I've previously done that with the spotlights. I put the four of those together onto one wire. Same with the side lights, put all those together onto one wire. And then the two beacons, two lives, those together onto one wire. So the outcome should be that we've reduced 18 wires down to four wires. Um, everything's LED, so the current won't be a problem. You can see there how thick the, uh, the actual original harness was. To try and run that all the way down from the roof right the way down through the cab is crazy you know you've got to drill 20 mil holes put grommets through it's, it's just crazy there's no need for it i say the majority of them are wired in the bar but this one wasn't for some reason um so individually i'm just heat shrinking them all up as watertight as possible but I mean, being out and exposed to the elements, all you're doing, you're just delaying the inevitable, really. You hopefully will delay for years, but if you've got wires exposed to the element, eventually they will succumb to corrosion and they will rot, no matter what you do. Um, the ones that are actually inside the tube, they are obviously shielded from the elements to an extent so they last far longer um, but it just wasn't an option with this one uh, there was only one entry one exit point so didn't want to drill the chrome bar so I'm just sleeving them all up the best I can obviously same again with heat shrinks is quite difficult you're reducing four six eight wires down to one so you can't get a, a, the heat shrink only shrink to sort of 50% of its size so you put in um, 16 mil heat shrink on it's only going to go down to 8 mil maybe 7 but obviously that's not enough so you have to reduce then the the, the 8 mil you have to use 8 mil heat shrink and reduce that down to 4 mil to get it tight so it's always worth spending a bit of time just heat shrinking everything up make sure it's all nice and tight nice as dry as you can possibly get it um and then the final, I've got a, a, just a, a larger heat shrink, uh, probably 20 mil, I think. Push that down the best I can. Um, let's seal it up. Now, I normally like to use a heat gun rather than open flame. But I know you can't see, but I, I'm on the roof of a truck uh, in the wind, in windy conditions. And there was no um, external power supply available to me at the moment on this truck. So being sort of 13, 14 foot in the air while I was working. That's, uh, it, was, it was the best option for me. So same again, 20 mil, that's reduced down to sort of 10, maybe 12, and I've reduced 10 mil heat shrink, I've put that on, which is squeezed down to sort of five mil. Um, and then after I'll be taping it up, and this is it. Thanks for watching.